Hey everyone, uh, today I wanted to make a video talking about Chidi, uh, more specifically the latest generation of Chidi printers that have come out recently. I'm talking about the Q2, I also have the Plus 4 here, and then I have a uh, fleet of 18 Q1 Pros that came out about a year and a half uh, or so, maybe longer. And um, there's something about these printers that, in my opinion, make them the best value um, when it comes to building a 3D print farm for servicing customers um, in a much more professional uh, manner in terms of the types of products that you can produce for, pre for other companies. And what I mean by that is um, these printers are capable of printing more advanced filaments like those carbon fiber ABS filaments. Um, nylons and things like that. Uh, types of materials that businesses most likely would come to you, especially if they're like a manufacturer for something else and they just need components uh, and they need components made, they're, they're typically going to want something other than PLA. And in my opinion, if you want to be a service provider and provide printing services to other companies, to other businesses, you need to be able to print more than PLA. At a bare minimum, you need to be able to print ABS. And in my opinion, the Chidi printers are the best value that you can get on the market when it comes to having a, a printer that is more than capable of printing these types of filaments. Now, there's a couple of reasons beyond just its internal chamber heater that uh, make it a good option. There's other printers that are coming out now with chamber heaters like the H2S, um, H2D, and uh, I think there's, I'm sure there's other printers, but most recently the one that pops into my head are the bamboo printers, the H2D and the H2S. Now those printers are great and I know that the quality that they produce is excellent, but for the price of one H2S, that's $1,500 um, with the AMS. This one is $499 just for the printer by itself. So you can almost buy three of these, three Q2s for the price of one H2S printer. And you're going to be able to produce parts three times faster because you now have three nozzles to make parts instead of just one. Yeah, the H2S is a little bit bigger and, and you can fit most parts, you know, bigger parts on that. But the thing is that when, when customers are looking for components uh, for, for manufacturing or um, manufacturing assemblies or things like that, maybe they just need a bracket or they need some sort of um, uh, enclosure or something like that, typically that's going to be something small, right? In my experience, I've been, I've been 3D printing for five years now and I've serviced a lot of customers and different parts and I can tell you that majority of the parts are going to be even small enough to print on something like the bamboo A1 even the A1 mini right because that that's where the money is in my opinion you know stuff that are this small right that you could charge let's say three or four dollars a part but you're making uh you know say 500 to to 2,000 of, of these parts, then the, it really starts to add up. The profit starts to add up. But the, the catch is that you have to be able to print them in ABS or some of these other advanced materials. So the fact that the Q2 is a little bit smaller than the H2S, I think is sort of a non-issue. Um, so for, for the price, you know, you can have three of these. Now, aside from just it being cheaper, I honestly think this is just as capable as an H2S minus the whole extra servo extruder and like all the bells and whistles, which in my opinion aren't really necessary. They're more there to hold your hand and kind of tell you, hey, something's going wrong. If you're an experienced 3D print operator, then the Q2 is, is all you need. I mean, you're going to know if something goes wrong. You don't need a notification or some wiki to tell you what, what to do. Um, if you're a professional 3D print operator, the Q2 is all you need. Um, but aside from that, um, this thing runs Clipper, right? So it's open source. 
and even though this isn't the stock clipper that you can download from the clipper uh, github page it's a, some sort of modified version that chidi uses but that's okay because you can still modify it you can still do things to it um, i built a small elementary sort of print farm management system a uh, web app that i i developed myself and I'm able to talk to the printer directly so I can send all my files to all the printers. I can start the heat up, you know, I can do restarts, home all the printers. It's kind of cool actually because if I, I can select all and then home and then they all kind of in sync start to, to, to move together, which is pretty neat. But I can do that with the Q2 and any of the Chidi printers because they're all using Clipper and Moonraker. I can't really say that about the bamboo 3D printers, right? They're they're a closed source uh, system. They're they're a closed system, and uh, you don't really have access to it. I think you can go into LAN mode and a couple other things like that, but honestly, it's it doesn't give me the confidence that I can do absolutely anything that I want to it. But you can with this Chidi printers, and it's been excellent uh, for making it do things that I want it to do. Um, for example, you know, send API commands to it, API calls so that I can, um, uh, you know, just control it through my own custom interface and things like that. So that's another big win in my opinion for the Q2 or Chidi in general. And then uh, the third thing is, which isn't really it kind of falls in line with the fact that they are using Clipper is that you can automate these 3D printers. Um, when it comes to making parts and producing a lot of parts, you need to incorporate some sort of automation. I'm a one-man show, right? Occasionally I get some friends and family members that, that help me to, to package and things like that whenever I have a large order that's like several thousand pieces. Um, you know, they come in and help me sometimes, but for the most part, I run this entire thing by myself. I still have a full-time job. I have a family with kids. You know, I just have a normal personal life as well. So I don't have time to sit here and just baby every single one of these printers every time a part stops. And like I mentioned before, most of the stuff that I make is pretty small stuff. Here's a toy from my son, but you know, you can say that, that this is this is small and, and you can make the argument that yeah you'll put you know a bunch of these on the build plate and let it run for a long time but that's not the most efficient way in my opinion what I like to do is I'll put a part and then I have the uh, the tool head comes in knocks it off the build plate and starts another print and you can do that because clipper uh, or more specifically moonraker has a print queue feature and Fluid, the Fluid interface, has a print queue dashboard as well. And that is enabled, well it's not enabled, but it's available on the latest version of the Fluid interface for the Q2. So straight out of the box, you can start automating. The only problem that I faced with the Q2 compared to the Q1, if you notice, the door on the Q1 is, uh, has, has much larger spacing. Uh, because the the door is is curved here, there's there's about a three inch space from the front of the door to the edge of the build plate, and on the Q2, however, the door was was basically directly on the uh, the edge of the build plate, so you didn't really have enough space to knock par parts off. So I designed this spacer here, and what was really nice about the Q2 is that um the type of hinge they decide that they decided to go with here allowed for for this spacer to be installed without interfering with the body of the uh, of the printer which was really nice this actually worked out perfectly so now i have that same amount of spacing that i had on the q1 on on the q2 with this with the spacer here and everything bolted up perfectly um, I'll put these on printables or make a world or something, probably printables, um, with some magnets here and it works perfect. So that allow that gives me that space to automate parts. Um, here's some pieces that I made for a customer 
some oil and gas trade show models. Um, you know, I printed these on the Q2. I didn't automate these because these are sort of just one-off pieces. But um, some other items that, that I've made, you know, just something very simple. You can automate it and knock the parts off. Um, so, I know this video is just super rough and I'm just rambling on. If you made it this far, you know, I appreciate it. I just wanted to, to kind of highlight that, that, that Chidi printers are the best value out there when it comes to setting up a print farm you, if you want to if you if you want to start servicing customers and offering a printing service i would strongly consider looking at the chidi printers they came out with the chidi box which i also purchased honestly this thing this thing kind of sucks you know i'm i'm going to be 100% honest it's nothing like the ams i mean the ams is has its own issues sometimes but this thing just honestly i would consider this a failure um on their part it, it's just it's just really bad really bad experience but i'll get into that maybe another day anyway i just wanted to come in hit record and just share my thoughts let me know what you think i hope i don't sound like a shill i don't think like i don't think i'm a shill i just i I've used the printers long enough. I've done research on all the printers that are commercially available to evaluate if they if they are print farm worthy of being in a print farm and and these are the in my opinion these are the best. I like bamboo. I think bamboo's great. Amazing quality, amazing reliability, but it's just a closed system and that that really hurts. You know, that really hurts the flexibility that you need for business to be creative, to innovate, to to scale um, and just just be more efficient. You're you're at the mercy of whatever bamboo decides to give you. Anyways, guys, that's it. I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching.